Do you want to look like a cool hipster while you take your street photos in Berlin or wherever else you might be? Then the X100 might just be the perfect camera for you. If you can find one, that is. Yeah, I might go on anything anymore. <laughs> You'll be pretty lucky if you can get your hands on an X100 these days. That's because it's enjoying a bit of a social media moment right now. What do you do then if you're shopping for one of these right now? Well, stick around to the end of the video to find out. Now it could just be the best way to buy an X100V in 2023 is to not buy it at all. But before we discuss all of that, let's discuss the camera itself. Of course, this camera has a very nice physical construction. It makes it feel like you're using a vintage rangefinder without actually having to use a vintage rangefinder. The biggest of all of the physical design features is this viewfinder. When you look through it and flick this switch, then it turns into an electronic viewfinder, which is a pretty cool feature. Don't let me forget this fixed lens. Yes, that's right, fixed, which means it doesn't zoom and there's no changing it either. So it is really laudable what Fujifilm have achieved here, but in trying to combine the worlds of analog and digital together, they, they leave the user in this kind of like weird middle zone. Take for example the autofocus. This is something that's been widely discussed and yeah, it's not particularly accurate and it's not particularly fast. And then they don't really give you a good alternative as well. Like the manual focus is all by wire, so it doesn't feel nice. Even when you use it in fully digital mode, I find it they haven't really perfected this either. This leaves a lot of question marks for me. Now I would just like to step in and defend Fujifilm for a second, just for a second. Real digital rangefinders cost you know, two or three times more than what the X100V does. So it's probably not fair to put it in this category. I think the most compelling comparison of this camera is to shooting analog photography, which is both becoming quite popular and quite expensive. This maybe can give us a hint as to why the camera is so popular and why it's sold out everywhere. And Fujifilm have actually acknowledged this. In a recent interview, some high-ups at Fujifilm said that they want to expand production, but they said nothing about a new camera coming out. So with no new X100 in near sight, well, that means that the situation probably isn't going to change anytime soon. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing. In fact, there are a few good alternatives that we can look at. And when it comes to cameras, I could really just recommend to anybody, there's only two series that come to mind. The Canon M50 Mark I and II, and the Sony a6000 and above. You don't really need to search any further than these. They offer more than enough photography capability. They bring video features to the table. Like, I've seen people style these cameras up. You could even throw like a vintage manual focus lens on one of these with an adapter and give it that sort of hipster edge. You don't necessarily need to get an X100 to get something that looks cool. But if you live and die by the trends and you simply must know what is a good alternative to the X100V, I would steer you in the direction of the Nikon ZFC, for example, with a kit lens 28 millimeter. There is also the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II, and it comes in around that price range of the 100V when you factor in the price of a lens, and so it could also be a good option. Now there is another thing you could do, and, and that's buying a used X100. Of course, the X100Fs, they've gone up in price since the X100V is sold out everywhere. And if you look older than that, the cameras do get a lot cheaper, but you have to be a little bit careful. I used to own an X100S, and I loved that camera. And, well, one day it died. I think the X100 system is not really built that good, to be honest with you. I sent it into Fujifilm, I said, hey, like, can you fix it? Because I really liked it. They said they don't really fix them, actually, and they said for 600 bucks, you can get an X100F and uh, call it a day. I mean, doing the math, 
I came in including the price of the used X100S, a little bit under the retail price, but that was when you could still buy these. Maybe if you can get your hands on a broken X100, you might even be able to get yourself an F or a V for the price of the repair. But that's at your own risk. I don't know if Fujifilm does this anymore, and if you end up buying a broken camera and they don't fix it for you, I don't want to be responsible for that. So try it, but uh, you're on your own. So now you know how to get an X100 in 2023. Or better yet, what alternative is right for you? I have this camera now, but it was easy for me to get, and, and that's not the case anymore. So please, don't waste your time and money getting this if you're not sure that you want to buy into the hype. I certainly wouldn't. If there's any camera you'd like me to see compared up against the X100V, then please leave it in a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you think. If you'd like to see more of me on this screen, then you can subscribe to the channel. That also helps me make more videos, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.